It can. Hello, Dirk. How are you? Different look today, huh? Di- different place. I thought, yeah, we have to change location. It's always the same. Location, location, location. Yeah, here we are. Here we are. We've got to look a bit different and the vibe can be here. So. Oh, I hope it doesn't upset anybody that suddenly the look is different. <laughs> <laughs> change, change. No, no, this is all good. And, you know, it's still wet and raining. Yeah, so I think this is the last day. I think um, forecast is for sunny weather because the youth is coming up on the weekend and I'm sure that they don't want to have this kind of weather when they're out on the beach. You, you pray three Sundays in a row, is it? Or two Sundays in a yeah, row? Yeah, that's right. It's, it's always rain. So next Sunday, it's going to be, no, it's it's going to be your job again. I, I mean. think it's just sort of like, yeah, look, enough is enough now. Yeah. <laughs> and, Oh, look, you know, the funny thing is um, downstream, obviously they're having all the problems, but here the dams are full. That's what we prayed for the yes. farmers, the land to be so wet and yes, everything yeah. to be replenished. I mean, we feel for the guys in New South Wales or the flooding, but we probably can still use a bit more mm. while you're on a roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dams aren't um, full yet for the reserves for what they need, but yes. no, it's good. So, no, God is good. Hey, today I thought um, maybe we just do a bit, bit of reflection and rejoicing that as a church we're getting involved in this program, Winter Shelter. Ah, yes. It certainly did feel a bit wintry, didn't it? And so it's a good thing to start preparing for it. Well, it? can you imagine being homeless yeah. in weather like that and sleeping rough? And so this program where is it uh, June to, to August, so about 13 weeks, mm. We provide shelter one day per week. So with seven other churches, so in six churches. others. So, so yeah, 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 seven seven days. Yeah, yeah. So each mm. church a day, mm. and so they sleep at our place. We provide dinner, security overnight. So mm. I do night shift and mm. provide security. <laughs> and breakfast in the morning. And breakfast in the morning, and you know it's just wonderful. We're able to do something like this. It's probably small. You know, there's so many homeless, but. We're doing something. And it got me thinking about a passage in John chapter 29. Ah, yes. What does that say? And John chapter 29, I heard someone refer to it because it has some strong imagery of the anointing Mm -hmm. of when the Holy Spirit is on you and how life is then. And, you know, I give you, he says, um, Oh, for the days when I was in my prime, when God's intimate friendship blessed my house, When the Almighty was still with me and my children were around me and my path was drenched with cream, drenched with butter and the rock poured out for me streams of olive oil. Can you imagine? Very flowery kind of language. Ah, yeah, but like, you know, you're you're into imagery. Can you imagine when everything is full of butter? Everything is easy. Flutch, flutch. (laughs) Yes. Well, it talks about, you know, um, the cup overflow is being in the abundance. You know, when you're saying anointing, anointing, I often sort of think is very much about when you are in the flow of what God is doing. The spirit is is kind of like taking you along and it's like effortless because yeah, there is so much abundance around what yeah. God is doing. It's just a joy to be in it. Yes. Yeah. And so if there's oil and if there's butter, there's no mm. friction. Everything mm. is effortless and mm. just smoothing along. So... But then he talks about something else. So he, he had the Spirit of God strong in his life. But then he talked about something else. And um, he, uh, I put on righteousness as my clothing. Justice was my robe and my turban. I was eyes to the blind and feet to the lame. I was a father to the needy. I took up up the case of the stranger. I broke the fangs of the wicked and snatched the victims from their teeth. I thought, and then, you know, I would die in my own house, my days as numerous as the grains of sand and so on. Men listened to me expectantly, waiting in silence for my counsel. After I had spoken, they spoke no more. My words fell gently on their ears. They waited for me as for showers and drank in my words as the spring rain. When I smiled at them, they scarcely believed it. The light of my face was precious to them. I chose the way for them and sat as their chief. I dwelt as a king among his troops. I was like one who comforts mourners. That's very practical now. Isn't it? Ah, the, the, now it's kind of like, you know, yes. if you have an anointing, you know, bless others as you've been blessed and uh, 
that otherness that God in his word always directs us. It's like, you know, it's not just about, oh, me and God, you know, yeah, yeah. we're cool, you know, um, let's leave it at that. But no, that, that whole thing in the first part is that anointing, that flow, is so that you can flow in what God is doing and he directs our paths then to have an impact, an influence, a, a blessing on others. Yes. And yeah, so there, there was the anointing that was there, but what he basically did with the power and grace that God was giving him, he said, I put on righteousness. Yeah, like a, like a, yeah. And like, and, a and like yeah, righteousness, clothes. righteous living, yeah. take up the case of those that are oppressed and, you know, with the power of God, break the fangs of those mm. that are oppressed. Mm. When you do that, mm. you put on righteousness as a robe or as a mm. turban. Mm. What do you think that refers to? Well, you know, I think in those days, righteousness as a robe. Now, robes were... Um, you know, the normal people didn't have robes. They yes. had, you know, it's like, you know, so yes. robe was already a kind of a standard, a status, yes. uh, an importance, you know, yes. position, authority, yes. all sorts of, you know, images. Like, it's the same sort of thing today when we sort of say, look, the judges have the robes on or yes. the police have their gear on. Yes. The, the uh, army has, yeah, you know, yes. so you immediately can see or by the what they're wearing, man, these are people of power, influence, yeah. you know, yeah. they, yeah. they have authority. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's what it's talking about when you have the robes of righteousness on, you have the ability to affect something positive to the people who are needy yes. and who need to have someone who will fight their cause, like the fangs, you know, yeah, it's, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's almost like, you know, you know get in there. And, and oh, it's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, when you do that, when you look after the poor, the widows, those that are helpless, um, the world notices because he put on the robe of righteousness and everyone in the city gate, the king or the nobles could see it. And they were silent in his presence. Mm. There's something powerful that happens when the righteousness of God is settling on us and we're choosing to live it. We actually have an impact on this world, which goes beyond even caring for the poor. It's you get noticed, you get respected, honor comes your way and you can shine a light in this world. Do you know, it's funny thing just to pick on that today. It go, I was, I was um, as part of the counselling thing, I have to do ongoing yeah. professional development. Yeah. And I was doing one uh, that, that we're talking about the positive effect of what we, what we have when we do it, right? Yeah, so it's yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah. what is the impact? And they were talking about it in, in percentages that if you have a, um, uh, a certain disposition, like for instance, if you're... Um, a fitness guy or whatever yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. Uh, your impact on the people around you, there is actually a scientific correlation that you affect how others will actually sort of think, oh, man, maybe I should get to a little oh, yeah, bit yeah, fit, yeah, or yeah, whatever yeah. it is. Yeah, and yeah. then they said the same thing that is it in the negative. If you have, you know, if you're dealing with, uh, with um, weight down issues, you know, whether that be depression or whether it be, you know, overweight or in, any of those kind of things that we're talking about, that in the family life and your friendships yeah, yeah, yeah. has also an impact. Yes. You know, on Sunday I had that, um, that uh, reference from Psalm 1, the first few yeah, verses yeah. where it says, you know, don't walk in the council of the scoffers and yeah, all this yeah, sort of yeah, stuff yeah. and sit yeah, yeah. with the sinners. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You know? So like, yeah, yeah. it actually sort of says the company you keep has an effect on you as well. It's yes. like, you know, so what we're talking about here is that your robes of righteousness have an impact, a ripple effect. Yes. Yes. On to the people that, is, that are around you. Yes. In a positive way. In a positive way. So, yeah, like, um, I'm not even preaching on it, but, like, um, it really speaks to me. And I probably, you know, bringing it to a close, I think one person that had a really sizable impact in the world, and everyone noticed she was wearing robes of righteousness, was Mother Teresa. Yeah. You was, know? Every, right. She was selfless. Yeah. But, you know... The, the kings yeah. of this world welcomed her and her counsel was being heard. Yeah. Um, so, and then, mm. you know, and this is the last one. Do you know, what, what, what do we wear in heaven? Yeah, we have wear of robes. Of righteousness. Yeah. Do you know, the, the Bible says that the robe is actually made out of the good works we're performing. Yeah. And Luther actually sort of added saying, God doesn't need our good works, but our neighbor does. Yeah. You know, yes. that's the impact and the robes of righteousness speaks all the way into heaven. Yes. Wow. So, well, that's probably our encouragement today um, as you're listening. Just um, put on that robe of righteousness and that turban of righteousness 
um, have, have a heart for the poor. And as, as you care, there's dignity coming on you. There's honor coming on you. There's authority coming on you because the righteousness of God will shine like light, as Jesus said, and we will wear it in eternity. Wow. Yeah. Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.